Last week, Ars Technica featured an interview with Hacker X, the extremely cool nickname for a guy named Bob, who's actually kind of a giant chud. Okay, so this started back in the spring of 2020 when Teresa Payton published her book about the proliferation of misinformation online called Manipulated, Inside the Cyber War to Hijack Elections and Distort the Truth. She interviewed an anonymous programmer who said that back in 2015, he was hired by an anonymous, to us, not to him, company with three goals – run an online news campaign that would net them a lot of money, make sure they did not get caught, and not let the deep state get Hillary elected. In other words, they wanted to game the Facebook algorithm to brainwash credulous bigots. You may already guess at this point that this guy is, in fact, a chud. Sure, we've all been tempted to bend our morals to make that next rent payment, but at this point, he's already described himself as the best at building algorithms that could target the right message to the right people, which suggests that he had other options. And it turns out, he did. More than a year after Peyton's book launched, Hacker X decided to reveal himself to Ars Technica as Robert Willis, a programmer who has worked with the well-known white hat hacking group Sakura Samurai, which was founded in 2020, so long after he worked as a misinformation specialist. He also revealed that when he accepted the Facebook algorithm job, he already had another job offer from another company. So yeah, this wasn't done out of desperation unless that other job was hacking the Make-A-Wish Foundation to funnel money to neo-Nazis. While he did reveal his identity to Ars Technica, at first he did not want to reveal the name of the company he worked for. So in that article, they're just called Koala Media. But immediately after the article was published, a lot of people were very annoyed that this apparently evil empire was being protected by anonymity. So he went ahead and published a blog post revealing that Koala was, in fact, natural news. That's when I finally got really interested in this, because I've been acquainted with Natural News and its founder, Mike Adams, for a very, very long time now. Uh, For instance, here's a video I made about Adams five years ago, criticizing him for selling a chemical-free mosquito repellent to protect people from the Zika virus in an ad that was literally displayed right next to an article he wrote claiming that the Zika virus was a hoax propagated by the CDC and Barack Obama. That's hardly the worst thing Mike Adams has done, though. That award probably goes to uh, the time back in 2014 when he published a kill list of scientists and journalists who he compared to Nazi collaborators because they supported the manufacture and sale of genetically modified organisms. It started with a completely bonkers blog post on natural news that Adams wrote in which he called for a new Nuremberg trial to prosecute people in the new Nazi science of biotechnology. He wrote, it is the moral right and even the obligation of human beings everywhere to actively plan and carry out the killing of those engaged in heinous crimes against humanity. That screed was almost immediately followed up with the establishment of an entire website called MonsantoCollaborators.org, Monsanto being the big evil GMO company. And that website featured the subheading Agricultural Holocaust and a giant swastika above a list of collaborators. The site claims every 30 minutes a farmer commits suicide due to GMO crop failures. The responsibility for these deaths falls upon those individuals and organizations shown on this site. Until this global agricultural holocaust is stopped, these deaths will continue. So yeah, that's a pretty clear dog whistle, encouraging people to murder journalists and scientists because they have a different opinion about GMOs. People immediately reported this site to the FBI, and it was removed. But 
The internet, of course, always remembers. Right after the website was made public, though, Adams posted an update on his post on Natural News uh, to point to that website. But after the FBI got involved, he claimed he actually had nothing to do with that website. And then he said, actually, I'm pretty sure that that was a false flag operation set up by the people on the kill list. The site was registered using a private proxy, but Nick Price of the blog Twip Science found that MonsantoCollaborators.org was registered before Adam's blog post was even published. He also found that the site shared with Natural News entire files which do not appear elsewhere on the internet, shared graphics, the same proprietary fonts, similar code structure, matching file naming conventions, and other code quirks. Now, again, that happened in 2014 and was pretty widely reported on in outlets like Mother Jones, for instance. This tells us two things. One, it's very clear that Mike Adams realized in 2014 that he was out of his depth when it came to attempting to create anonymous websites that furthered his own goals while seeming to leave his own hands clean. And two, Robert Hacker X Willis is either lying or revealing an incredibly deep-seated stupidity when he told Ars Technica that in 2015 he had no idea that Adams was dangerous. And that Willis thought Adams was simply an internet natural health guru looking to use his current viewership to explore other topics outside of natural health, which included stopping Hillary Clinton. There were already random things like chemtrails, but like I said, I thought it was entertainment. Willis quickly helped natural news become one of the absolute worst peddlers of dangerous misinformation on the internet, mostly by setting up fake Facebook profiles that then set up groups that shared natural news stories stories and other articles that were anti-liberal, anti-vaccine, and anti-rationality in general. In 2018, even Weather.com had noticed and was talking openly about the incredible job Natural News had done of making itself into an alt-right pipeline that efficiently led Facebook users down a path from grapefruit juice protects against weight gain and diabetes straight to the government controls the weather. In 2019, The Atlantic profiled Natural News as the leading peddler of anti-vaccine misinformation on the internet. Uh, considering their dubious distinction as one of the seven anti-vaccine pages that accounted for about a fifth of the top 10,000 vaccination posts on Facebook. In 2020, the London think tank Institute for Strategic Dialogue, ISD, published a hefty analysis of natural news as a disinformation empire that subverted Facebook's weak attempts to lessen their overall influence thanks to a network of more than 400 sites posting content from offshore troll farms in places like the Philippines. ISD found that many of those sites hosted violent extremist content and that the earliest sites were registered in 1996, but the bulk of them were registered in 2015 the year that Robert Willis was hired. Oh, and speaking of extremism and the Philippines, one Facebook group that was set up in 2015, the year Robert Willis was hired by Natural News, was Manila Central University Graduates, which the ISD notes is the fourth most active page that linked to Natural News. And they also shared other posts promoting things like Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte, known for his various human rights violations and things like extrajudicial killings. He literally ran on the campaign promise that if elected president, he would pardon himself for murder. Oh, and one of his most well-known critics, journalist Maria Reza, was just awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, causing pundits to wonder whether or not that should shame Mark Zuckerberg into stopping people like Mike Adams and Robert Willis from doing what they've been doing. So... Yeah. Is it possible that Willis had, as Ars Technica reported, no indication that the company that was about to recruit him was extreme or would become so in the future? That in his perception, the company was investigative with regard to its journalism? 
Sure, anything is possible. Willis could, of course, consider himself to be one of the world's greatest hackers, but also do absolutely zero due diligence in the company that was about to hire him. And he could further take absolutely no interest in world affairs, like wondering who Rodrigo Duterte is, or whether or not vaccines are important. But Willis describes himself as social, liberal, and fiscal conservative, very punk rock, borderline anarchist, which if you have two working eyeballs in the year of our Lord 2021, you can see is an entire field of red flags. And according to his Wikipedia page, prior to joining the Natural News team, he headed the fourth congressional campaign for the Connecticut Tea Party in 2009. And according to a press release, he was a member of the Fairfield Republican Town Committee and volunteered for many Republican campaigns across Fairfield County before running as a Republican for the Connecticut State Congress in 2014. He also told ours that he is neurodiverse and has major issues with understanding empathy. Hmm. So, yeah, a lifelong Republican who considers himself very punk rock borderline anarchist with a severe empathy deficit just happened to end up, despite having another job offer with another company, at Natural News a year after that site was in the news for encouraging the murder of scientists and journalists. He then helps them become one of the biggest peddlers of dangerous misinformation on the planet. By accident. Sure, whatever you say, hacker X.